1 Corinthians 8, 3. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Love is a major theme of God's word. Love is a powerful thing. The Apostle Paul wrote about love in Romans 13, 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. This passage states that we should love others. Though we are now under grace and no longer under the law, and Paul teaches this consistently, he gives us references to the Ten Commandments saying that love is the sum of them. If you love someone, of course you won't bear false witness against them. You won't steal from them. You won't covet after the things that are theirs. You won't harm them, and you won't wrong them. Paul states that our love is the fulfillment of the law. This is because God is love. And he gave us a way to eternal life through Christ because of his love. God's love for us is why he died as Jesus Christ on the cross. Romans 8, 3 and 4. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Romans 10.4 For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Today's practicing Jews still live under the law, as they are not under grace through belief and faith in Christ. They reject Jesus, and therefore they remain under the law. The first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are called the Torah, or the law books. There are a vast array of laws, and I will give you some examples. The burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, permitted foods and forbidden foods, rituals after childbirth, moral laws, Sabbath regulations, ceremonial laws, penalties for breaking the law, laws of purification, inheritance laws, marriage of female heirs, laws concerning unsolved murders, laws concerning female captives, and the list goes on and on and on. There are a total of 613 mitzvah or commandments in the Torah, and the Jews painstakingly try to follow these, but they always fall short. Imagine, with all of the pressures and trials of this life, adding 613 laws to the load. It is impossible for people to live by the law to be flawless and blemish-free. Mankind cannot do it. No one has ever done it. This is why God came as Jesus Christ, to do it for us. God is eternal, and He knows the future. When He gave the law to the Jews, He knew they could never fulfill it. But he already had a plan. He would come as Hamashiach or Messiah and show us how it's done and do it for us so that we could be counted righteous through Jesus Christ. He showed us the way by doing it perfectly and he gave us the new covenant. It is the new and living way, the newness of freedom and concrete assurance through our blessed hope, Jesus Christ, is a guarantee into eternity with the Most High. For those of us in Christ, God has lifted the burden of the law through Christ, and he replaced it with complete freedom from the law. The immense load and hardship that the law brings is demanding and mentally exhausting. And that's if you can even remember all of the laws. Personally, I'd be afraid to move if I was under the law. It will always bring disappointment when one fails at observing the law, and failure is guaranteed when trying to do so. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yet Jesus came for freedom from the law. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Jesus removed this immense burden because of his love. 
This should broaden our understanding about how much Jesus truly has done for us and what living under his grace means for our freedom in Christ. He made the way simple for our salvation and into eternity with him. He has removed us from the darkness of the lost and moved us into the eternal light of salvation. And he also made our current life on earth less burdensome while we live under the freedom of his grace and not under the law. This ties in seamlessly with the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee was arrogant and boastful, and he looked down his nose at the tax collector. The Pharisee basically proclaimed that he observed the law, which again is impossible. He was a legend in his own mind. He wasn't being truthful, but he was fooling himself, and he proclaimed this falsehood before others. On the flip side, the tax collector acknowledged that he was a sinner, and his heart was humble. He knew he needed work, and therefore Jesus said that he went home justified, not the Pharisee. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Acknowledge your sin and move forward. You are already forgiven because of God's love. Embrace this and find his freedom. Break free from the yoke of bondage of the world and find rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus alone fulfilled the law perfectly because of his love for us, and only he could do it again because he is God. Through our love for Jesus Christ, we are made righteous through him. God looks at Jesus' righteousness when he looks at a believer because of his love and grace. Our sins are made spotless in his sight. Oh, hallelujah. Through our love for Jesus and others, we are following in Jesus' footsteps. We are being like Jesus and therefore imitating him. When we love, we walk as he walked. We are living in his victory with him. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us. When we walk in love, it truly pleases God. In love there is peace, joy, hope, forgiveness, long-suffering, etc. These are all traits of God. Love covers a multitude of sins. Paul finishes the earlier passage by saying that love does no harm to a neighbor. Jesus also spoke about loving our neighbors in Matthew 24, 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. Love God first, and secondly, love your neighbor. Jesus tells us that the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments, and both of these have to do with love. Jesus and Paul were basically elaborating on the same thing. Love is central, and it is a beautiful thing. Our love for God is how we are known by Him. Everything that God is, points to love. 1 Corinthians 13.8 Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 16.14 Let all that you do be done with love. Ephesians 2.4 and 5 But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved.